Well, it's day three, people, and we are still going strong. So today we're looking at components within components. We're gonna actually start on the body of our little Twitter application uh, by giving it some layout love and also giving it some structure in a very Angular 2-ish way with heaps of components. Let's get to it. Okay, so first of all, what we got to yesterday is you'll recall that we had our first component, which we'd set up from our HTML binding to some backending properties, which we'd set in our annotated component here, our app component. So we'd expose these properties and rendered them. Well, today I want to take a step further and start looking at components within components. So let's just take a step back and think about what we're building. So say we're building a Twitter clone. Let's just fire a browser up. We're building a Twitter clone. Twitter clone looks like this. Now, if we were looking at this with component eyes rather than with page type eyes, we'd say, well, there's probably a menu component happening up here in this top section. There's probably some sort of feed component or timeline component happening down here. There's a who to follow component. There's probably a profile com and trends component. And all of these live on the page and some of them will actually need to intercommunicate. But when we're modeling this in Angular, we're thinking in component terms. Now, so far, we've only got a body component that's living in the main body here. It's time for us to set that right. So what we're going to do now is create a menu component. So the way we do that is again, ng generate component, component, and why don't we just call this menu? That will go off and it see it's generated a range of files here under our app folder. Uh, and while we're here, why don't we just generate a component as well for our actual feed? Why don't we call that our feed component? Again, we've generated our feed component and our menu component. So now let's have a look at the source and see how we can integrate these guys. Now, once we've created those components, we now have these new menus that live under our app folder and all the things related to the component, its TypeScript file, its HTML and its CSS are all living within this one space. Now, when the shell creates these, you just get something that says feed works and it binds to basically an empty backing component here. So why don't we just now, first of all, add these components to our parent HTML and see what happens. So what did we say? We're going to have a, well, we'll need to know the name of this tag, which is specified in its decorator here. So if we had a look, the name of this tag, remember our selector is app menu. So let's go into our app component and add ourselves an app menu tag. And then we've got this sort of body section here. And uh, well, I guess we don't really need that for now. So we can probably just get rid of that. And why don't we replace it with an app feed? Feed. Great. Now we've got these set up. We've got our components. There's nothing actually binding in the component, but we know that inside the HTML for each of these, we know it says feed works by default, or it says menu works. So that's a bit of a getting started procedure. So why don't we run this bad boy and just see what happens. So here's our twitng and it's refreshed and lo and behold, just do a quick refresh to make sure that nothing's gone awry. There's nothing here. Now this is a real trap when you first get started, but that's because our app component in here, the app component that we know in its HTML references these other components, well, it actually doesn't know how to work out the name of those components or look them up to load the relevant classes. So there's a few things we need to do. First of all, we need to say that you can, this particular component, our app component, contains two directives. And those directives, which are just the classes we've just created, uh, which are our feed component, component, and our menu component. Now you'll see that it's not compiling here because I haven't yet imported those components. So I'm gonna now import those components. So I'm gonna import feed component and that lives in dot slash feed. And then you'll see that now my menu components highlighted menu component and that's from dot slash menu. Okay, so now we've got our two components imported. Let's just see, this should live refresh in our browser and we should be able to see what happens. And we have, we've got menu works and feed works. Okay, so we've made a start, but ours is not quite looking like this yet. In fact, it's looking pretty terrible. Now I find with hobby projects, it's worth investing a little bit of time uh, just so you feel like it doesn't look really terrible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just nick 
completely nick some stuff from Semantic UI. Now later in the course we'll show you the best way to load these files lo locally and incorporate them into your build tool. But for now I'm just going to grab the recipes off the CDN uh, of how to use this. Now this is a complete styling, think Twitter Bootstrap, but you know that kind of deal, uh, but lots of cool templates and stuff. And I'm just going to go down and, and basically grab the stuff that's off the CDN. Now I, for time I've actually just grabbed these ones here already, so I'll grab the style sheet and I'll paste these in the show notes. And this is, I'm just going to paste straight into my index HTML. As I said, there's better ways to do this, and we'll we'll look at some of those better ways later in the course where we integrate this into our build system so we're not burning time actually loading all these things uh, remotely. But in our case, um, for the quick, cheap, and cheerful option, we're just going to load them right now. So if I save that, that will now load this semantic uh, UI toolkit along with its jQuery dependency and a bunch of style sheets. And if I was to load that up and have a look at my tweet and G, I can see like a little tiny bit of joy happening here, but still nothing that will motivate me to keep working. So then I'll go into our uh, little cheat sheet of things here and see if I can find, oh, see if I can find something like a menu, which will be here. Let's grab a menu. Now these look like Twitterish menus, so that's definitely looking cool there. I quite like this. This looks quite material. So let's just have a look at that and completely cheat that. Now this is going to be our menu component, right? So I'm just going to grab that menu and I'm going to paste it. Now the HTML for our menu component we know lives next to the menu component. So why don't we just paste that straight in there? We've got a menu. And then in our body, in our feed component, why don't we just, in fact, I think even in our little layout tool here, there was a UI segment here that we could style that feed component in. So why don't we also style our feed component? With just a little bit of this, a little bit of super layout magic. And just say, uh, I might just keep this so we know that the feed is still there. Cool, and that's where our feed's gonna go. So now if I was to have a look at this in a browser, where is it? Oh baby, look at that, that's looking sensational. So I've got my nice little menu here that is gonna be some point populated by our menu and uh, we'll have a feed that somewhere lives in here and uh, we'll have a look at this shortly, how we're gonna actually populate this. But for today, the main thing we wanted to understand was that you can create nested components within components and that at the root level, you have to make sure that you import those components and add them to the directives for that component. So it knows how to resolve those tags when it sees it. So we can resolve this out and we can get our actual app running. So that's all for today, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow where we dig a bit deeper into the TypeScript language that backs this stuff before we start to get more serious about parent-child relationships and get that feed populated. So make sure you join us for that. It's going to be awesome. And I'm really hoping you're doing the work at home, experimenting on your own projects. Okay, this is just a shot in the arm, just a shot in the arm.